Another week of Alpha 2 testing has gone by, and now we have another week of PTR updates where Intrepid continues to make massive improvements to the game, including more balancing issues and some big corruption changes. It seems that the big focus this week is getting these servers ready for all of those Wave 1 players coming in on Friday, and on Tuesday, November 5th, they fixed multiple GPU-related crashes, including memory crashes, fixed a bug to prevent ghost characters from appearing to be stuck on walls in the world, made improvements to the environment at Samaya's Hope, fixed an exploit allowing cargo to be transferred from one node to another, made more improvements to NPC navigation to help with server performance, increased the spawn area of NPCs in the killing fields, and changed visuals for the rounded bottom of waterfalls. Wednesday today is when the big updates are starting to happen as Intrepid made it so corrupted players will no longer be able to unequipped equipment, which means you can no longer hand off your equipment to friends once you get that corrupted flag or stick them in storage, you're gonna drop it if you don't lose your corruption before you die. Corrupted players will also no longer be able to trade, which goes into that as well, so no giving anything to other players if you are corrupted, so if you get corrupted, you're kind of stuck with the consequences. They fixed a bug causing players to become combatants incorrectly when killing a corrupt player. They fixed an exploit allowing storage to be transferred via cargo between nodes. Updated the buff bar to no longer resize the UI when a character has max buff slash debuff. The item roll duration has been increased from 15 seconds to 30 seconds. Made improvements for road generations and visuals. Made changes changes to the NPC population at Samaya's Hope, made changes to the NPC population in the Scholars Academy Caravan Camp, fixed bugs in Samaya's Hope Commission so they no longer refer to the incorrect NPCs, fixed a bug with node resource storage causing items placed outside of the default node resource storage to be lost, fixed a bug with node expansion plots that didn't work correctly, fixed a bug causing some parts of the world to appear pink, updated the Ancient One's lighting orb abilities, made updates to model rendering, fixed a graphic crash bug related to lighting, fixed several GPU crashes, fixed several server and client crashes, and made even more improvements to the NPC navigation to help with server performance. And it's only Wednesday, so I expect another large update come tomorrow, where we'll see even more changes as we go into the third weekend of Ashes of Creation's Alpha 2 testing, and probably the biggest weekend so far, because the gates are opening for those Wave 1 key holders, so thousands upon thousands of more players are going to jump in and try it out. Overall, Intrepid is continuing to respond and react extremely fast in regarding to these changes, which they again proved last week, but they're continuing to prove, and they seem to be working overtime to make sure that this game is in a very good state come this Friday, and we have seen the progression over the last two weeks as these servers have been getting gradually better, performance has been increasing, they fixed a lot of bugs and exploits, they're constantly doing updates to the game even while these servers are live, and now during the week constantly using these PTR updates to really gather more player feedback and continue to iterate and work on these problems so the vast majority of players don't have to experience the mess that could be if they weren't utilizing the PTR as they are. Make sure you click that subscribe button and stay updated because again, I'm going to update you on all the patch notes this week. And I, again, I expect even more come tomorrow and hopefully some more archetype changes as they seem to be slowly implementing those as they did with the tank last week.